in this lecture and in next coming few lectures we are going to talk about this keyword in javascript we are going to understand what is this keyword how its value is determined and what value will be assigned to this keyword in what scenario but in this lecture we are going to keep things simple and we will understand what this keyword actually is the this keyword in javascript is a special type of variable which stores the value of the current object and the value of this keyword is not static it changes based on where we are using it and its value is also determined at runtime at compile time we don't know the value of this its value will be determined only at runtime let's try to understand what is this keyword and where should we use it so here we have a very simple object called person which has two properties name and birth year and it has a method called calculate age which is taking this birth year parameter and based on that it is calculating the age of the person now here i am using this hard coded year value but here we can also use date constructor but i want to keep things simple here so i am using the current year and i am subtracting the birth year of the person from the current year all right so here if i want to call this calculate age method first i'll have to use the object name which is person and on that i can call that method that calculate age method and when we are calling this calculate age method we need to pass the value for this birth year so here let's pass 1990 and this is going to return us a value let's call it age and let's go ahead and let's log the age in the console if i save the changes you see based on the birth year the age has been calculated by this calculate age method so it subtracted 1990 from 2024 and it returned that value we stored that value in this variable and when we are logging it it has logged that value if i change this value to 1985 so now based on this birth year it will calculate the age and it will return it so in that case the age will be 39 so this function is working as expected but here if you notice for this person object we already have a birth year property so we don't need to pass this birth year parameter to this calculate age function we should be able to use this birth year property itself of that person to calculate the age so here i'll not pass this birth year parameter i'll remove it and now we want to use the birth year property of this person object here to calculate the age and here also i'll not pass the value because now this calculate age function is not taking any parameter so i'll remove this parameter value from here and we will simply call this calculate age function now if i save the changes you will see that we have an error and it says the birth year is not defined now why do we have this error because here we have this birth year property and when we are trying to use this birth year property we are getting this error the problem here is this birth year is not a regular variable it is a property of an object so if we want to access this birth year property we need to access it on that object we cannot directly access it like this so here we will have to use the object name which is person and then we can use dot notation or square bracket notation to access its property with this if i save the changes the error should be gone and now it is properly calculating the age based on this birth year property so now it is working as expected now here we have a problem inside this calculate age function we are directly calling this person object and on that we are accessing the birth year property but what is the problem here let's say i also have another object let's call it user to this again i am going to specify the name property let's say mark let's also specify the birth year property let's say birth year is 2000 and here i am also going to use gender property okay because this user object is different from the person object so we don't need to have same properties in this user object also let's say gender is male but now what i want is for this user object i also want to have this calculate age function this calculate age method and this calculate age method the, the definition of the calculate age method in this user object also is going to be same so what i want is i want to borrow 
this calculate age method from this person object and I want to use it in the user object. And for that, what we are going to do is we are going to create this calculate age method on this user object after we have created that object. So here I'll say user dot calculate age. So we are creating this calculate age method on this user object. And to that, we are going to assign the calculate age method of this person object. So here, let's say person dot calculate age. And here I'm not calling the function. You see, I'm not calling the function. I'm not using parenthesis here. So what this will do is this expression is going to return us this function definition. And that will be assigned to this calculate age of this user object. So this calculate age, it is also storing this function. Now, what I will do is let me go ahead and let me copy these two lines or maybe what I will do is instead of calling this calculate age method on this person object, I'll call it on the user object. Okay, because now this user object also has this calculate age method. And for the user object, the birth here is 2000. Right? So when this calculate age method will be called based on this birth year, age should be returned. Here the birth year is 2000. So the age should be 2024 minus 2000. So the age should be 24. But if I save the changes, it is still returning 34. But the result should be 24. Now, why is that? That's because when we are calling this calculate age method on this user object, it is going to call this same function because this same function we have assigned to the calculate age method of the user object. So basically this function will be called, this method will be called. And in that method, what are we subtracting from 2024? We are subtracting person dot birth here, which is 1990. We are not subtracting user dot birth here. We are subtracting person dot birth here and person dot birth here is 1990. So when 1990 will be subtracted from 2024, it is going to return 34. And that's what the value we are seeing here. And that's why using this person object directly inside this function is dangerous. Another thing which can happen is, let's say after we have set this calculate age method to the calculate age method of this person object. After that, let's say I destroy the person object. I simply say person equals null. Now what this will do is, it will destroy the person object. This person object which we have created, it will be stored somewhere in the memory. And when we have set it to null, now that object is gone. So this person is no more storing that object. It is null. And when that is null, that means this person dot calculate age will also be null. And we are assigning that to this user dot calculate age. So if I save the changes now, you see we have an error. Okay, this error we have because we are trying to change the value of a constant. So let me create it using let keyword. And now if I save the changes, you see we have error. And this error says cannot read property of null. And we have this error at line number 42 at this line. Now, why do we have this error? Because when we are calling this calculate age method, as I said, since this calculate age method was pointing to this function, inside this function, what we are trying to do? We are trying to call the birth here property on the person object. But at this line, we set that person to null. So we are trying to call this birth here property on null. And that's why we have this error. And that's why I said, that directly using this person object inside this method is dangerous. So instead of doing this, what we can do is we can use this keyword here. Now, what does this, this keyword mean? This keyword is a variable which stores the value of the current object. It points to the current object. Now, what do I mean by that? So, when we are calling this calculate age method on the user object, the current object is this user object. So this keyword here, it will point to this user object because we are calling this calculate age method on this user object. So this keyword here, it will point to this user object. So if I save the changes now, we should not have any error. And for the user object, the birth here is 2000. And we are subtracting that 2000 from 2024. So the result will be 24 and that has been returned here. So this here is pointing to user object. So 
this dot birth here will be equal to user dot birth here. But instead of user dot calculate age, if I say person dot calculate age, then inside this calculate age method, this will now point to this person object. So that means this dot birth here will be person dot birth here. And what is person dot birth here value? It is 1990. So now the result should be 34. If I save the changes, okay, it says calculate age is not a function because let's remove this line where we are setting the person to null. Let's save the changes. All right, I changed it at the long location. So it should be user dot calculate age. And here we are going to call the calculate age on the person object. Okay, so when we are calling the calculate age on the person object, this variable here, it will point to this person object. So this dot birth here will be person dot birth here, which is 1990. If I save the changes, you see 1990 has been subtracted from 2024 and it has returned this result. But when I say user dot calculate age here, in this case, this variable inside this calculate age function will point to this user object. So in that case, the result should be 24, as you can see. So always remember that inside a method, when we use this keyword, that this keyword will point to the object on which we have called that method. One point you need to remember is this keyword does not point to the object inside which we are using it. Instead, it points to the object on which we have called the method where we are using that this keyword. Okay, so here let me call it as age one when we are calling the calculate age on the user object. Here let's log age one, and now let me create another variable. I'll call it as age two, and here I want to call this calculate age method on the person object, and here I want to log age two. So again. When we are calling this calculate age method on this user object, at this time, this will point to this user object. And based on that, the age will be calculated. So at this line, when we are logging age one, it should log 24. But then at this line, when we are calling this calculate age method on this person object, inside this calculate age method, now this will point to this person object. And based on that, the age will be calculated. And when we are logging age two, it should log 2024 minus 1990. So the value should be 34. So if I save the changes, you will see 24 and 34. 24 is getting logged from here when we have called this calculate age on the user object. And 34 is getting logged from here when we have called this calculate age method on this person object. So this is what this keyword is. This keyword always points to an object. And inside a method, the this keyword points to the object on which we have called that method. Now we are going to talk about this keyword in more detail in our coming lectures, but this is the basic of this keyword. This keyword is basically a variable which stores an object. Now which object does it store? It depends where are we using the this keyword. When we are using this keyword inside a method, in that case, this keyword points to the object on which we are calling that method. When we are calling this calculate age on this user object, this keyword points to this user object. When we are calling this calculate age method on this person object, this keyword here points to that person object. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.